Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is going to be part one of our series on tile-based games. In this video, we'll be getting started with our project, talking about what we're going to be doing and what is a tile-based game. So tile-based games are really common. Dungeon crawlers, Legend of Zelda style RPGs, uh, strategy games, even side-scrolling platformers like Mega Man are all tile-based games. Sometimes the tiles are obvious, like in Civilization, uh, but sometimes they're not even visible at all. But what we mean, or what game designers mean when they're talking about tile-based games, is that we're using a grid of tiles to lay out our game world. The graphics, the map, the movement of the sprites, everything is based on an underlying grid. And there's a lot of advantages to this. It helps in organizing the data in your code, it helps in designing the graphics of your levels, and you'll see how it all goes together. In this series we're going to start out with the very simplest possible grid of tiles and slowly build up to more advanced features like maps, level design, fancier graphics, and so on. So for this project we're going to start out with a basic game loop structure and you can click on the link on the screen if you need a refresher in how we created this basic structure uh, in the previous project. And over here in the settings, the main thing we're going to be concerned with is this tile size variable. This is how big the tiles in our map grid are going to be. And a lot of times that can vary quite a bit. Um, typically, you might find them in powers of two. 16 or 32 or 64 are popular sizes, uh, but really it all boils down to your preferences and, and the art that you have, uh, what size the artist has created the tiles in. So I'm going to use a tile size of 32 pixels. So every square on the grid will be 32. And I've chosen a width and a height here for my game window that are values that are evenly divisible by uh, 64 or 32 or 16. Um, so that I will have a whole number of squares across and down and no, uh, no partial squares showing on the screen. And finally I have these two variables here, grid width and grid height, that are just going to be the width divided by the tile size. So in the case since we have 32 here, uh, grid width will be 32 and grid height will be 24. So that's how many squares fit uh, on my screen. It'll be 32 squares by 24 squares. So the first thing let's do while we're getting set up is let's just draw that grid on the screen so that we can visualize our squares and know what our grid looks like uh, as we're getting everything working. Um, so I'm going to add here to the def draw here. I'm going to say draw grid and then I'm going to define that. And to draw the grid we're just going to want to make a couple of uh, loops. So I'm going to make two, two loops, one loop to draw the horizontal lines and one loop to draw the vertical lines. So if I count x's from 0 all the way to the width of the screen, and the increment I want to count by is tile size, right? I want to count by 32's. So I'm going to count from 0 to 1024 by 32s, and each place I will draw a line. And that line for the pygame.drawLine command, we just tell it the screen. I'm going to use this light gray color. And the endpoints of the line will be x, 0 and x, height. So I want to draw a line at whatever x I'm at, going from the top of the screen down to the bottom. And that will draw my vertical lines. And I'm just going to do the same thing for my vertical lines. I'm just going to draw, I'm going to count y's uh, to the height. And that's going to go, those are going to go from 0, comma, y to width, comma, y. And that should give us our uh, grid. Oops. That should give us our grid. Okay, so now we have our grid. We can see the lines of our grid on the screen. So now let's add a player. Now I have my sprites here and I started out by just defining a really basic uh, player sprite. It's just a square that's the size of one of the tiles 
and I just tell it an X and a Y for where I want it to spawn. Okay, and that's going to look like this. We'll do that in the new here. We're just going to say uh, self.player player. We pass it a copy of the game and we pass it the X and the Y where we want it to spawn. Now these are not the X and Y pixel coordinates. These are the grid coordinates. So which square? So the upper left hand square will be 0, 0. So if I put 0, 0 here, 0, 0 here, then the player will spawn up there in the upper left hand corner. And so I can just tell it what square I want it to spawn in. So let's move him out a bit so he's out here in the middle. So we're gonna that's gonna be our spawn spot. And so you can see I tell it this self.x and self.y are keeping track of what grid coordinate we are on. And then in our update we just put our rectangle so we draw our rectangle at the pixel that matches that. So we're mul multiplying the x times tile size. So if we're on square number three that's three times thirty-two and that's where the upper left hand corner of the square will actually be drawn in pixel coordinates. So now let's talk about how we would move our player around. So we're going to use the four arrow keys and we're going to do four directional movement. And in fact we're just going to do um, steps right now. We're going to say you, you, you have to stand in a square. So if you press up you will move one square up. So like a, like a chess piece on the chessboard. And we can do that very easily by, we're going to define a method called move, okay, for the player. And that's going to let you move in two different directions, x or y. Okay, so the dx and the dy, so how much should x change, how much should y change? Now normally those will be either a positive one or a negative one. But I'm putting explicitly right here that dx will be 0 and dy will be 0 by default. So if I call the move command and I tell it to move x by 1 but I don't tell it the y, then the y is going to be 0 by default. Okay, And so what we want to do is we just want to say self.x plus equals dx and self.y plus equals dy. So we just move our x coordinate and our y coordinate by the amount we were supposed to change. Right? And then we can just map those to the keys. So over here in our events section, we're going to add some more key down events. So if the key was pg.kLeft, then our we should just tell our player move dx equals negative 1. Right? And dy we can leave out because it will be 0. So left will make the x change by 1. Uh, negative one, sorry. And so we can just uh, duplicate this a couple more times to get the other directions, right? Right is going to be x by positive one. Up will be changing the dy by negative one, and down will be changing the dy by positive one. And that's all there is to it. Now our arrow keys let us move around. But you do have to press the key over and over again, right? So a quick and easy way to let you move by holding the key down would be just to do the uh, to use the key keyboard repeat function. So here in the init section, we're just going to set the uh, repeat rate, and you do that by just saying uh, how long should it wait before it starts repeating. So we're going to say if we hold it down for half a second, 500 milliseconds, and then start repeating, and repeat every tenth of a second. And what that will let us do is if I hold down the right arrow key, I can just step right along by holding the arrow key down. Okay, And we're going to do some more advanced movement later on in this project. This is just our very simple first steps just to get something on the screen moving. So don't worry if you start to think this is kind of limiting. Okay, let's just add one more sprite now for our wall. And our wall is just going to also be a square. Alright, so is a square. It's going to be the size of one square. 
And if we want a long wall, we just have a row of those uh, all next to each other lined up. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to pass it, of course, a copy of the game and also an X and a Y for where we want that wall to spawn. We're going to make it a member of the all sprites group so it gets drawn. And we're going to make it a member of the walls group, which we're going to create to hold all of the wall objects. So we'll just initialize it with those two groups, oops, self groups. And I'm just going to make, again, just like we did in the player, we're just going to make a surface of tile size by tile size. And I'm going to fill that with green. So that'll just be the color of my walls. And we define our rectangle. And we just need to set the X and Y, just like we did in the player. And we're going to set the rectangle to that location as well. OK, so there's our wall, simple wall. And over in our game, we just need to make sure that we have created a walls group to hold them all. Now, to spawn a wall, all we really need to do is just make a, is call a wall and give it two coordinates to tell it where to be. So I'm actually going to spawn a few of them. So let's just spawn from 10 to 20, say, uh, I'm just going to spawn a long wall right here. So I just create a wall object at that X and with a Y of, say, 5. And that should create, oops, if I type the word in, OK, and there's our wall. OK, so we have 10, 10 squares filled in. So now, I have everything on my screen to get started talking about how my map is going to work. And in the next video, we will add collisions and talk about how we can add more walls and add them in a more intelligent way. Thanks for watching. Please press that like button below and subscribe for the next video. See you next time.